I'm Jono Buchanan. Now in this video we are going to explore a kind of useful admin task. No, don't turn off. It's going to be exciting, I promise. I'm going to interlace it with some music. Would you like that first? Of course you would. You've been good. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, now listen. I've made videos in the past about ways in which we can facilitate the workflows that we bring whenever we're creative. And the best example of this, which I've talked about in the building a template video, is the idea that if you write for film music or TV music every day and you're reliant on the kind of sampled orchestra, you could spend six hours every day simply setting up all of your short strings and your long strings and your short woodwinds and your long woodwinds and all that good stuff before you even got around to writing a piece of music. It makes much more sense to organize your project to save it as a template so that you can start the day with a collection of sounds that you like and if your template is big enough it will keep you guessing and doing interesting things forever and this video is kind of an adjunct now there's a word i'm not sure i've used before <laughs> i know swallowed a dictionary um to that idea that what we can also do is to think about other ways of facilitating workflows and so this video is going to be all about making screen sets ways in which we can call up different views within logic depending on the task we're working on and it's really straightforward. So here is my main page. I've got this configured without the library open, without the loop browser open, without any MIDI region editing available, and without the mixer. And of course, what we get into the habit of doing is saying, okay, well, I want to edit the bass line, so I'm gonna double click, and now I can see the piano roll display, and I'm gonna turn that off when I'm finished, and now I want to mix, so I'm gonna press the mixer button, and that takes up some space at the bottom of the screen, and now I want the main page back, so I'm going to close down the mixer. And sure, we can do that, and in fact, this channel is over 200 episodes long now, and I do that all the time. So there's nothing wrong with it, but maybe there's another way that we could do that too. So let's suppose for a moment that I want my main page to look like this. This is the home that I want to come back to every time I just want to return to my main setup like this. But let's suppose what I also want to do is to have another set of screen sets available to me to carry out particular tasks. So let's suppose, for a moment, the next thing I might want to do in this project is to go browsing for more sounds. Well, if they're software instruments, they're likely to come from the library. And if they are audio loops, they're likely to come from the loop browser. So let's create another screen set with those two windows open so that I can easily access either side of the screen. Screen sets are up here. So at the moment you can see that I'm looking at page number one. And if I click here, I can see that what is currently displaying is the mixer and the tracks. Now you might be thinking, well, hang on, where's the mixer? It's not open. Well, it is over here on my laptop. Because of the way that my system is set up, I'm able to cre uh, create screen sets that include any and all displays that I have connected. So everything we're about to do, you can think about if you're working on more than one monitor by putting things in different places depending on where you like to have them. So that's useful to know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this screen set by coming to the duplicate button. Seems reasonable. And what that's going to do is to create a new one and it's going to ask me firstly what number I want it to be and what I want to call it. Well, I'm gonna call it sound browsing just because it's nice to type live. And then what I'm going to do is to press OK. And that is going to be screen set number two. Now at the moment, screen set number two looks a lot like screen set number one, and that's because I haven't done anything yet. But let's suppose the next thing I might potentially want to do would indeed be to open up the loop browser and potentially go looking for information or sounds there. I'm even going to come in to make sure that I'm looking at the instrument lists because it's far more likely that I'm going to look by instrument than by genre. And what I'm also going to do is to open up the library in case actually the next sound uh, collection I want to go browsing for is a software instrument sound or I want to make edits to the existing sounds that I'm working on. Okay, so this could be screen set number two. 
Now, because I've left it here, this is the current screen set number two, I can go back to the first one that I set up simply by pressing the number one on my keyboard and we're back to the main page. And now if I press two, I'm going to discover that those windows that I set up are now available and ready for me as well. Great. So I'm going to come back to number one for a second. What I'm then going to do is to hit duplicate again. I think you know where I'm going with this now. What I'm going to do is to make this number three and I'm going to call this MIDI editing and then I'm going to press OK and this time what I'm going to do is to make sure that the piano roll display is open. I can double click on the bass for instance. I can make sure that for now automation is closed but I want to make sure that this window is taking up a serious amount of space. If I'm coming here to do piano roll editing, I want to make sure that I can properly see that. The size of the piano roll editor is going to be captured as part of me making this screen set. And to show you what I mean, what I'm going to do is to come back to number one. I'm going to go to number two and now I'm going to come to number three and we're going to see that the size of the piano roll display that I've left open here is captured as part of this screen set. So now I've got a third window and all the time I've left the mixer open here um, so that it's part of that screen uh, set as well. And again, let's just make one more. Let's suppose there's going to come a moment where what I want to do is to get ready to mix. Well, I'm going to duplicate these and what I'm going to do is to make the next one the mixer. I'm just going to call it mixing. But maybe what I'm going to do this time is to recognize that what I really like to do when I'm mixing, I'm going to close this down and open up the mixer instead, is to make sure that I don't know, let's take an example. Let's suppose I'm somebody who likes to make sure that at the mix stage, the add limiter is used as my final brick wall limiter. Now, obviously by setting it up in my mixer page, it is going to be permanently on for the whole of the process of me writing this piece of music that I'm currently working on, which may not be advantageous. As we know, the adaptive limiter is going to introduce a lot of latency, but let's suppose I just want that to be part of the channel. The great thing about that is that what I can actually do is to put the ad limiter in the place where um, it's kind of within the mixer. And if I scroll away or browse away from this particular screen set, number four, the mixer page, what's going to actually happen when I come back here is that that plugin is going to be open on that page. So again, if it turns out that you have a little channel strip collection that you like to work with, and when, it when you open the mixer, part of what you like to do is to have access to those plugins right from the outset, they can be open and they can be waiting for you. Now, at the moment, I have an opportunity to change any of these things. If I come back to screen set number one and I decide that I want to open up something else, smart controls, for instance, at the moment, I can absolutely do that and it will get captured and will stay within screen set number one. And maybe what I do is I browse here and I open something by accident and I forget to close it. So if I want to make sure that when I press one, I always come back to exactly this screen set, exactly the way that it is, currently set up, what I can do is I can lock the screen set and that will prevent me from making any further changes to the combinations of windows that I have open and that's fine. I can do that if I want to. But what I can now do is to make sure that across my workflow, as I'm moving from one re instrument or region to another, if I click on the piano roll display, oh sorry, if I click on the electric piano and press three, now I'm going to see the piano roll display that's open for that instrument and not the bass. Equally, when I'm ready to mix, I can come to um, screen set number four and the adaptive limiter is waiting there for me as well. So within this video, what we've done is to look at screen sets. And particularly if you're somebody who works like with templates, likes working with templates, I would definitely say go back into your template and add some screen sets to it as well. So you're further optimizing your workflow. I told you this was going to be one of those videos. And in the last, right at the end, I've said further optimizing your workflow. I know. It's like I work for a logistics company. There's a thought.